I'd normally sit down for the Q and A episodes, but as you can see, my couch is a little indisposed. Hey guys, welcome back out to another film learning Q and A. You ask the egg, and the egg is about to answer. So let's just skip any crap that I'm going to waffle on about and get straight into the questions. Okay, our first question comes from Saish Raul. I'm pretty sure I butchered that. How much did the green screen with stands and lighting cost all up? Well, that's a hard one. I've had my green screen for nearly 15 years, and it cost me around $400 at the time, but I'm pretty sure the company, uh, EEFX, if memory serves, they don't make them anymore and I think they're out of business. As far as the lights go, my first softbox set I bought off eBay and I think that cost around $300. The stands for the screen were around about $100. But as far as my new LED lights go, the Aperture Amarans cost around about $89 each for the smaller ones and $300 for the large panel light. I think if you head to eBay, you'll find a green screen and stand set for less than $100, but good lighting is still gonna run you over around $500. I currently have five lights on me in this shot. So if there's any advice I can give, it's don't skimp on your lights because lighting your image makes your image. Next up, Tony Black asked, are you a Final Fantasy fan? I'm gonna be honest with you, Tony, I've never played a Final Fantasy game. RPGs were never really my thing. My little brother Rob, however, uh, this guy, he has been on the show before, loves them, and he played the crap out of Final Fantasy VII as a kid. He actually, I think, burned those discs out. And I'm pretty sure he's played up to 13, but I can't be sure. I was always more of a Resident Evil fan. Moving on from that, Amartin Mishra asked how to get good music for motion graphics without Filmstro. Well, there is loads of free music in the YouTube Creator Library, and then there's sites that you can pay for, like Audio Blocks, Audio Jungle, and you know, the whatnot. But in all honesty, there is a reason I use Filmstro in every video I make even this one. And it's not because they sponsor the show. I would happily sign up and pay for a membership if they didn't. It's very affordable. In some cases, it's less than $100, depending on what time of year and what discount you get. And you get access to an ever-expanding library of customizable songs, which isn't something you can download from a stock website. And if it sounds like I'm tooting their horn a bit, it's because I am. I mean, I love Filmstro, and I will use it as long as they're willing to sponsor me, and even after they are. Next up on Facebook, Dennis Pinney Oberhacht. God, I, these names. Uh, he asked two questions. What are the specs of your rig? And what do you think of the Michael Bay TMT movies? Which are not Bay movies, I know, but we'll go into history as Bay movies. As far as my rig goes, you'll find the specs for my PC in the About section of the channel. Trust me when I say it's unimpressive. It is six years old, so just be prepared. As far as the Bay Turtle films are concerned, I think they're awful films. I gave the first one a pass the first time seeing it in the theater because my expectations were super low and I gotta admit, I had some fun. But the second one was such a nostalgia driven circle jerk that I couldn't actually stand it. It took all these things I loved in the cartoon, pulled down its stacks, perked that hairy ass on top of my childhood and just put a big steamy turd right on top of it. Oh, and it turns Stephen Amell into such a whiny bitch, Casey Jones. I mean, just look at this scene and make your own conclusions. Thanks for your statement, Jones. That's Officer Jones. And I'm gonna be a detective someday. Come on! Cyan Legacy asked, what inspired you to make your first video tutorial? Well, I've answered this one before, but why not? I learned a lot through watching tutorials on YouTube, but outside of Andrew Kramer, nobody ever really tried having fun and making tutorials entertaining. The film right guys do skits, sure, but their tutorials are always so rushed and sometimes they skim over important details and you have to go back and watch it again and again. So I decided to make a tutorial show that I would actually sit down and watch. And that's how Film Learning was born. Nicholas Strands asked, how many hours per day does it take you to create content for the channel? Like not just tutorials, but vlogs and other videos as well. And why do you think there may be a lack of original content out there? 
especially with all these copy and paste content these days. Well, at the moment, my son is sleeping very well, so I get up around 6 a.m. every day. I do my cardio on the Stairmaster that's in the corner there, and I work on film learning until he wakes up. I couldn't nail down an hourly number per day because sometimes I have more spare time to work on the show than others. My wife has a sewing class tonight, which is why I'm filming this, and she has one tomorrow night, and my son is asleep yet again. But just to give you some perspective, an episode of the show takes between 10 to 30 hours, depending on how hard it is. As far as the lack of original content out there, I think that's just the nature of YouTube in general. The moment someone does something different and it hits, the bandwagon jumpers just climb on. I mean, look at Film Learning just as a quick example. I started doing teasers for the tutorial a couple of seasons back, now every bastard does it. I mean, it sucks, but I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. Do you? Tyler Lampshire asked, God, when will Pete make a comeback? If so, could he collab with Nooblink? It would be the cringiest, I mean, best matchup of the century. God damn it, Tyler. For those not in the know, I had a character back in 2002 called Bushman Pete. It was pure cringe and absolutely terrible. In fact, here's a clip. G'day. Now, an integral part of living in the bush is having a good bush dog. And today, I'm going to teach you some of the training tips for training your dog. And, as you know, one of the biggest parts of training a dog is training tools. Now let's go have a look at some of the more common ones and the one I use. Basic assortment of doggy training tools. We've got the fluffy toy, very popular with the kitties. The rolled up newspaper, popular with adults and many old people. And my personal favourite, 38 caliber hand pistol. Okay, this is one thing I can't stress enough. If you're going to work with guns, you've got to make sure safety first. Now, I've unloaded all the bullets out of this gun. Ah. Got on a dog. Now, as much as I'd like to bring him back, oh, that's a lie. Peter's dead. He ain't coming back soon. Sorry, Tyler. Not sorry. Bryce Gorham asked, "Have you seen any of the work? Oh, heard of Oat Studios? If so, what are your favorite videos so far? Neil Blomkamp's video production studio. I haven't, so let me go check that out." 20 minutes later. Okay, I'm back. That was some pretty cool shit. I've just watched the trailer, but I subscribed and I'll have to watch more of that because that looks friggin' 10 times better than that last movie you did called Chappie, which I personally found pretty disappointing. Moving on from that, Michael Aquino asked, This is the one the world needs to know. Does Grant prefer Xbox or PlayStation, or are you kind of more of a PC kind of guy? Or not any of them? Well, I kind of have to say at the moment, not any of them. The last PC game I played was Arkham City, and I still haven't opened Uncharted 3 for my PS3, and I let my niece and nephew borrow my Xbox 360 five years ago. I don't have any of the consoles of the current generation. In all honesty, I don't have time to play games, even though I really do enjoy it because I make this show, I make other videos on the channel, and I do my own paid gigs as well. So that pretty much takes up every single chunk of my downtime. Jackson Wilson asked, I'm looking to update my production computer and software setup. Any suggestions? Well, that's easy. Save up and invest in the very best custom PC that you can build. It might cost you upwards of $3,000, but the plus side is you're not gonna update that thing for a long time. I spent nearly $3,000 on my PC six years ago. And as you can see, that thing's doing just fine. Chris Beebe asked, will we see a film learning film masters crossover? That's a non-eating challenge. Well, here's the thing about myself and Mike. We're in totally different parts of Australia. In fact, he's two states away from me. The last time we were actually in a room together was in 2012. Now, he might be back for a guest role soon enough, but we'll just have to wait and see. Demantai Johnson asked, favorite MCU movie? Love your content, keep it up. I will keep it up. And that's easy, Winter Soldier by a long shot. 
I think most folks would agree with me on that. So Cheese Knight asked, what happened to subscriber shout out and the film learning sign offs? Well, that question's a little redundant since we just had an episode of subscriber shout out last week, but I'll add a card above to that video. Now, as far as the sign offs goes, I've only ever been sent one film learning sign off since I added that to the description about a year ago. And guess what? It was from you, Cheesy. I'll put it up soon. Lonely Productions asked, have you seen Spider Man Homecoming? Yep, and if you click that card, you can see what I thought of it. Henrik Silva asked, would you ever consider ending film learning in the future if need be? If the need came about and I would have to stop making film learning or say couldn't make them as often or to the same standard, I would totally consider ending the show. But as it stands currently, I've been making this show for over three years and over 150 episodes and nothing stopped me yet. So, and Let's Play Games asked, Hulk Effect please? Well, you must be talking about the shirts we're selling right now on Teespring. Link in the description, guys. Get them while they're green. They also come in other colors too. Well, that brings us to the end of another Q&A session, guys. If you'd like to ask me a question, throw it down in the comments with the hashtag AskTheEgg. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please like and share it. If you're new here, why not just hit that subscribe button or check out my Patreon or one of these other two videos that are over here. And that social media crap, Twitter, Facebook is above my head. I post all the time and sometimes some exclusive stuff, guys. So check that out. And until I see you again, keep learning.